Hello, and welcome back to EE for Everyone. Today, wait a minute. How did this dev kit from the upcoming really awesome and very interesting High Power Project Darwin series get put into this video? This, this, this project isn't supposed to happen for like a month. We're not, we're not talking about that yet. Uh, make sure you subscribe though. Uh, subscribe to make sure that you don't miss any of the upcoming awesome Project Darwin videos, because those are going to be cool. Ah, uh, right. Today we're going to tear down this printer. So, the funny thing about this printer, um, well, I really like it. it. It's worked well. It's done everything I've ever asked for from my printer, which is it printed things. But then all of a sudden, uh, my printer thought, hey, EE -E for everyone, what if we don't? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It just wasn't worth it. So, I got a new printer, which means this guy is both way too expensive for anyone to ever replace the toner, and also filled with stepper motors we can use to play around with. Sounds good to me. So, we're going to rip this thing apart. We're going to take all the stepper motors out, take a look at the control board. Yep, just mess around and have a good time with it. Yeah. Let's start with the easy bits. Paper tray out. Uh, let's see what we can do about this. Free? Hey, look at that. Manual paper tray. Free. Let me spin this around. Where are we meeting resistance? Ah. Okay. Oh, that's taken care of this. All right, so we've got some sort of laser module. Unfortunately, it is an invisible laser, which is way less cool, but apparently it can blind you. So, think I'll steer clear for now. There's some uh, FFC connectors here. They appear to be held in place with only friction. Huh. It's kind of a neat thing. Uh, if you're an irresponsible adult and you have a need for an infrared laser module cartridge, uh, let me know. I'll ship it to you. Won't do me any good sitting here. Maybe there's a mirror. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a mirror in there. I see. So there's a 45 degree mirror in here. So the laser beam is being directed at an angle, reflects off there, comes out. And that's how it's shining on, uh, on that larger green photosensitive. I don't even know. Is that an, an ink? A dye? Whatever that is. See a couple gears. I think that means we're getting close to the steppers. Yeah, so there's tabs on both sides. Oof. All right. Whoop. We're getting closer. One more panel removed. Alright, hunk of metal. Okay, can uh, No. 
Hmm. All right, come on. It's full of grease. That is cool looking. But the thing I was ogling is this incredible. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's. I mean, they're crappy plastic gears. But oh, just ah, oh, there's so many of them. <laughs> So this is turning all those, I believe they're helical gears, not too familiar. So I assume this is a brushless motor. Oh yeah, look at that, they, they even gave me the pin out. So there's plus 24, plus 24, ground ground, brake, no connect, start stop, ready, clock, and direction. So there must be a motor driver on here already. They even gave me the pin out for it. Nice. Well, <laughs> well, we're gonna have to take a look at this module. Just spin the gears. Yes. Absolutely yes. I like this. There's, there's an interesting, so here's the three modules they're running wires to that I thought were interesting. They're all the same connector. Now, of course, my hands are full of grease, so I can't grab them too well. There you go. It's kind of strange that you would need three of the same sensor on the same part of the system. Because, and they're all locked together. Like, uh, they're, they're linked together because they're all, they're all meshing. All the gears are meshing. So if you measure the position of one of the gears, you can derive the position of the rest of the gears. Again, these have got some weight to them. Pretty interesting. Go. Side had all the the motors and mechanical assemblies. Now the other side has the power supply, the control board, a cooling fan. Yeah, this side's got a, got a lot of cool stuff on there. You can see the, the open power supply. Ugh. Gotta get this control board out of here. Power supply, looks like the main control board back here. Not quite sure what this is. Hmm. There's a relay in here. So maybe there's a 20, uh, 240 volt or 120 volt mains connected heating element. The input with a big choke on the mains input or, uh, or their ferrite bead. Looks like. Fused. And obviously it's fine. This thing's UL listed. Uh, it's gonna have all the, the mains protection necessary to keep your house from burning down. Uh, this thing hasn't been plugged in for a long time, so I'm not too terribly worried about charge still being in any caps. Warning, high voltage. Hmm. Wonder what kind of high voltage they're talking about. There are some slots rooted in here. Oh. They have, do they have a voltage doubler? Why in the world would they need that for this printer? Well, so this could be the board that is used to statically charge. Does that drum have to be statically charged? So this could be making some incredibly high voltages. That's good. Wow, and then there's some spring pins on the bottom. So whatever this was contacting, the toner cartridge. Hmm. This was contacting the toner cartridge. Yeah. So here are these four pins for contacting toner cartridge. They butt up against these spring pins in there. Neat. That's really neat. 
So apparently toner cartridges require some high voltage. That makes some sense. That makes a lot of sense actually. Since I believe static electricity is somehow involved. So I can see where they've sketched out an isolation boundary, so I should be fine if I'm grabbing the board over here. So in the silk screen, you can see this line and sort of this transformer on the other side. It's sketching out where the high voltage is and where the high voltage isn't, which is great for me because it tells me where I can hold the board and where I shouldn't. This is a neat little board. Uh, looks like uh, the way they turn it out could be a voltage doubler, maybe two or three stages of a voltage doubler. And then uh, some switch switch transformers, and this could be a big FET for switching them, so that all all makes sense. I suppose, yeah, if you're interested in a voltage doubler, <laughs> I'll ship this to you. Again, probably only to irresponsible adults. I don't want to have an uh, inexperienced person zapping themselves with... Uh, Random electronics capable of generating high voltage. There we go. What in the world is this? Why is this thing so heavy? What's in here? Is this that rollerball? What? This doesn't make any sense at all. It says caution, 110 volts, high temperature. It's got a uh, TCO, thermal cutout. Mains input, some high current traces. I wonder if this is some sort of ceramic roller with like a heating element inside, like a big power resistor. But whatever it is, I think I ripped the connector out of it as I was. Oh no, it's got like a seated. No, okay, so it was meant to do that. All right. So as I was saying, we have the components from the disassembly. Got everything all set up here. We've got the like heater block, AC mains connected thing. We've got the the high power the voltage doubler circuit. We've got the main control board. Uh, the the UI like serial linked there's a little processor in there and just manages the display and the buttons we've got the main power supply which has a main 24 volt output some connections to connect to the control board power input and then one relay channel which is driving this guy with a the thermal cutout and when, when I think about the way that it worked the lights would dim when it would click on this heating element. It would heat for a little bit and this mechanism would spin while it was heating. So it could be some sort of heater and then spreading the heat around with the rollers 
where it's evenly <coughs> where it's evenly heating the rollers could be doing something like that yeah I maybe we'll have to dig into this a little more I don't think there's anything exciting in here it thinks there's going to be a heating element some gears and this thermal cutout but it's incredibly heavy the control board the voltage doubler and then a few of these a few of these little parts could be a custom part could be an off-the-shelf part yeah I, I don't know if I'm gonna find much information on them two pin devices though strange if there's some sort of encoder I think it'd have more than two leads yeah I have no idea and then here we've got a few of these optical interrupts, photo interrupters. This gear assembly, which has a brushless motor with the controller on here in the silk screen, it actually calls out the pins, what goes where, and then all the different functions. So it's kind of fun to play with. You can see the, you can see the gear spinning couple cooling fans one of them was near the power supply the other one was cooling this assembly and the the infrared laser orienting motor assembly S super cool I think there's a stepper motor in here and the laser diode allowing it to tip back and forth yep connects with the a ZIF cable. If you're interested in getting this laser module fired up doing something neat, right now it has an infrared laser in there which one can blind you and two doesn't look very cool on the wall. <laughs> but I think uh, based on the orientation you should be able to make a pretty cool laser kind of sweeping back and forth pretty cool effect. So if you're interested in getting this module looks like you could swap out the laser diode with a different one could be able to make something pretty cool out of this you know or just tear it apart and look at what's inside either way if you're interested in this laser module let me know I'll ship it to you <laughs> as long as you are over the age of 18 so I know you're not just gonna buy it and blind yourself because I don't want anyone to be blinding their themselves on my behalf you have to tear apart your own printer if you want it I did a quick look and I think that this part is actually a brushed DC motor. It's a basic motor rated for 24 volts. I could very well be wrong, but uh, this part number didn't really show up much, but it shows up as main clutch drive gear assembly for some Samsung printer. So seems like it's a little motor. I don't know what I'll do with it, uh, if I'll do anything with it, but yeah, neat. Probably going to keep the power supply because ah, who knows, you might need that someday. And <laughs> if you want the laser module or any of these parts, I guess, let me know. Well, thanks for watching. If you like teardowns and you want me to tear down more of my old broken stuff, let me know. We can rip it apart and see what's inside. If you think that teardowns are cool and this video was great, let me know by hitting the like button on this video, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a comment letting me know what you enjoyed. Most of all, hope you learned something today. <laughs> and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.